This is the patreon.com slash night attack song by Stephen Cogswell. Get it at otfi.com slash slash. That's L S S L A S H. Open up Mike TV. Ooh. Oh, damn. Yeah. Sounds to me. Ooh. The dulcet tones of Mike TV. Hell yeah. Seems to me like he's just one of the many talented artists we feature live right here on Night Attack. Absolutely, Brian Brushwood. Night Attack? It's a bright attack. Boy, you're bright if you join us in the light of the night attack. You first, my friend. Uh, hi, I'm Brian Brushwood. You can donate money where you can get a custom RSS feed. And also exclusive content. But, but I'm just saying, maybe you should give us money. Brian, come back. Yes.com slash night attack is where I'm going. Patreon.com slash night attack is where I live now. That sounds pretty great. Well, you're goddamn right. <laughs> We've been an independent podcast for five years. Run it, baby. Come join the team. Pretty sure what you just said is exactly show where we try to make a little bit of comedy for you beautiful beautiful people but we don't always hit the mark but you know what we always do is we show up every goddamn tuesday evening we set fire to the motherfucking internet and it's all because of you guys absolutely which is why we believe in you Oh, man, I don't know about you, but I say we do a show tonight because it's Tuesday night and without a complaint, we show up again. Now, eat my taint. What's going on, Justin Robert Young? Oh, my God. Yeehaw, I pledge my life to you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Dude, it's it's a little bit weird to be back in the saddle. It's been a good, uh, what, two weeks since we last uh, did a regular show? I mean, we we, we had that awesome rockin' South by So Wasted performance, right? We did, we did. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, we had, uh, it's always a rare treat. Whenever, uh, whenever we don't do a, a a Tuesday show because it happens so infrequently, but uh, I'm happy to be back. Back in Dude, the Seth. I'm not gonna lie. I totally ended up spending my Tuesday night watching ourselves <laughs> with the with the live replay. I didn't mean to. I really didn't mean to. I was like, oh well, isn't this fun? We, no one's we, admonishing we, you for this. Okay. I mean, but I feel I feel bad. And 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 then, uh, <laughs> but but it was fun to be in the chat and chatting with everybody. And uh, I don't know. It, by the way, if you've rewatched it, great show. It was a great show. I'm super proud of it. Everybody seemed really excited about it. Here was my favorite part about the show live on uh, stage in Austin, Texas, was uh, the time I took a pee during our own show. <laughs> like everybody else is oh, killing. Oh, it oh that's right, baby. Because during the line, you were able to. I didn't know you snuck off to the bathroom. I did. I was peeing, and I, I, it, it was one moment where I'm like, man. We're really working smarter, not harder here. Like this is this is a definite uh, a definite thumbs up for me. Here's how we know we 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 pulled off a, a a true con was because Rex came up and thanked me today. He was like, "Thank you for figuring out a way to get us on stage that doesn't require us to do anything except for judge other people." And I was like, "Motherfucker, this is what we've been doing for eleven years. <laughs> like like this, this is our game plan since the beginning." Uh, yeah, so thank you to everybody who came out. Uh, uh, this was a success on every possible level. The Ice Cream Social guys had an absolute blast. Whiskey Tribe, uh, Tom Merritt, uh, Andrew Heaton, uh, everybody else that was that was a part of it. Uh, uh, Possum Posse Dual Core, of course. 
uh, this was just such a dream, and I, I can't imagine it going any better than it did. It was fantastic. Uh, you thank you have, to everybody else who bought a ticket and came out. You have left out one very, very important thank you. Thank you to Bryce Castillo and the entire Bizarre Magic team for yes. the live production that you guys did. Oh. Uh, that w w Would you say that that was the most audacious? Like, like was, was that shooting for the stars? Like, hmm. I mean, can, can, can you think of anything that we've pulled off that 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 was harder than that? <laughs> it was certainly it was certainly bigger, and we had the most hands on it than I think we we normally do because normally we just steal the Possum Posse's PA system. Yep. Um. So it it was different. I, I I'd say it's 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 our biggest thing yet. Yeah. What are we gonna do with the VIP thing that we did the the day after? Is is that still floating around? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to the ice cream social guys. I think the thing that we kind of came to a thought on was like we'll both just have it and we can both put it out whenever we want yeah uh i i, I think I, there, was, there yeah there, there there was there was a talk of maybe splitting it yeah or... I, when when i talked to matt it sounded like like there wasn't an organic way to do that and he, right. and and i you know they're obviously all living in the same town and constantly yeah. creating content so I, I i got the vibe that it was a, just like hey man whatever way is easiest for us to get everything out yeah. and they're they're happy to point uh, uh, all I, the scoops our way. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we both decide. Yeah, either one of us just takes it and we send everyone to the other one, or we both just decide to release it at the same time on both. I, I, that probably yeah, feels I, the most organic. I, I, organic. I would say the the way that I'd always thought about it is uh, uh we just make it a a Patreon exclusive first for both of our Patreons, mm -hmm. uh, uh just for people to be able to have an extra treat. Uh, this was uh, of course. For the people that really kind of bankrolled initially this entire project, because by the way, we wound up making enough money to cover the cost of the theater with tickets eventually, but there was no guarantee that that was going to be the case, as we have never done this before. So the VIPs, I understand it sucks when you're seeing pictures and videos of of the cool stuff that the VIPs did, but please understand that event doesn't happen without the largesse of the folks that, that ponied up uh, for that. So uh, uh, we, we always want to thank the people that uh, are, are kind of making this stuff happen first and foremost. And uh, I would love to, to throw that up in the Patreon feed. Cause that was funny, man. We, there we, was, there was, it was some real stuff in there. Like, like, uh, well, and, and including, and now I'm kind of double talking out of school because like you and I had come up with the metaphor of Matt and Jacob trying to awaken the comedy golem. And, but we had never, uh, apparently we, we told that to Matt and we told that to Jacob. We did not tell that to Paul, uh, the comedy golem. And, uh, and then we decided sure in that. the middle of the VIP session <laughs> to say, and then it worked twice. By the way, this is what we've always thought you guys are doing. And we drew this whole metaphor. You guys are going to love it when you eventually hear it. But, but there was this moment where I saw on both Jacob and Matt just, eyes a little bit wider than usual as they're like yeah there was kind of a reason we didn't bring yeah. that metaphor up to paul <laughs> it was like kind of asking your significant other if they want to have a three-way <laughs> <laughs> hey look i'm gonna throw my head over the wall here but uh if you're into uh, it then i guess all the better wait what uh, yeah, Bonnie showed up just in time. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I I don't understand why they wouldn't tell him that. Well, because I, if you know it, if you know that that's what someone's trying to do to you, right? Uh, like 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 we, we portrayed it as uh, the the image that we loved was the idea that once a week, wearing adventurers hats, holding their their scrolls out in front of them, mm. Jacob and Matt, intrepid explorers, go and they find a giant stone, Paul Mattingly. With the eyes closed, and they they nervously shaking like leaves on the wind. They they read from their phones uh, stories, <laughs> and and they hope that just once they'll come up with a topic that, and they know they've hit it. When all of a sudden the comedy golem's eyes open like a, a from never ending story, the glowing eyes. There we and go. Then all of a sudden it stands up and gives us something as delicious as the Klingon speech or or, or something like that. that. Uh, he just he just opens his stone mouth as pebbles dribble down his uh, majestic <laughs> chin, and from this gigantic comedy golem emits the sound you'll never hear anywhere else. And then, just as quickly as it began, it recedes. <laughs> And, but 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 they're excited. They're like, "Ah, oh, that was great. Dare we try again?" <laughs> so, uh, uh, but no, they, they were they were so great. And ah, uh, oh, geez, man, did we have we talked on 
hear or anywhere about our trip to Dallas, our trip to to no, uh, no, uh, we we, uh, no, we haven't talked about any of that stuff. That whole week, man, what a, what a bizarre like like that was a lot. That was a lot that we did. In fact, you know what I really enjoyed uh, not doing that for a week. It was it was a lot. It was it was hectic. Uh, uh, so here uh, we'll bring you guys into the circle. Two weeks ago so, today, I, Justin and yeah. I are in studio together. We did that yeah. episode. We knew that we were coming up on the live show, and uh, the plan was the following morning we were going to drive up to uh, to Dallas to Dallas. do Andrew Heaton's something something's off podcast. Uh, how did it go, Justin? <laughs> well, uh, uh, we're 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 moving because of course. You guys know Brian and I. In fact, uh, Bryce, how would you describe Brian and I's planning? Uh, impulsive and often financially uh, irresponsible. I think you did tell everyone the previous week that you would be driving up, and we knew, okay, they're going to drive up. That would be fun. I think offhandedly you, it was mentioned that that would be the plan. And then I I called them later that day. Uh, we, we were texting. Oh, and that's right. We were texting about something else. And uh, they're like, well, we have a little bit of time before we, uh, you know, fall, before we fly out. And I thought, oh, that's a cute way to say, you know, we're going to hit the road and be on the way. <laughs> oh, that's for, right. Uh, you didn't even connection. know. Because and so were... I and so I'm like, OK, well, hey, I got to I got to solve this thing. So I get on the phone with them and they're laughing. They're drinking. There's ice machines being dumped behind them. And they go. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, after after the show, we we decided to fly. We were going to fly and buy tickets the day of <laughs> to fly well, to Dallas. It, not not just the day of, but it's like, so so we did the show. We wrapped up. You said, so long, fellas. Yes. And off you went. And then we were like, oh, so I guess we get on the road. What time? Uh, 8 o'clock? 7 o'clock? Mm, seems early. We have to drive. I was like, well, what if we flew to Dallas? Well, well, no, wait, no. Really, the problem wasn't the drive up. The problem oh. was the drive back. That's right, because, because I, I had a deadline. It's what it what it is. We wake up early. We get on the road. It's fine. Mm. I had a rental car. It's gonna be okay. We'll probably record some stuff for live stream or something like that. Wouldn't be the end of the world. Take a shit in Waco. Next thing you know, we're in Dallas. The problem is, if you've done that trip, that's it's a uh, you know especially because we're going to the north end of Dallas. We're going to Irving, like. That's five hours, and it's worse if we hit any kind of traffic, and we got to make sure that we're there for a call time uh, uh, because they actually are a professional studio, and they, like, need to chase people out at certain times. Mm -hmm. So we're like, all right, well, we got to wake up a little bit early for that. But then Brian's like, ah, yeah, but, you know, because in my – I'm going to confess something. I wasn't really planning on coming back that night. Oh really? <gasps> oh my gosh! I'm assuming, knowing us, that it'd be like, ah, you want to know what? Oh, God, another five hours in the car. That seems like a real Brian and Justin move that we find a hotel. I got a bunch of friends. Like I can call up my buddies in Deep Ellum. We can have a fun time. We wake up the next morning. And by, and by and the way, the irony of you two, of Justin coming into town for an Austin festival and then spending a night in <laughs> Dallas should not be lost on anybody. I mean, it would be a great opportunity. We could hang out with our friends from Film Riot. We could see Mikey <laughs> Newman. Could... There's a million things we can do in Dallas. Right, and then and then I drop the bomb. Like, yeah, I kind of have like a hard five thirty appointment the next day. So, at which, which means, point? Oh yeah. You you go ahead. So, well, so what, what was what was our turnaround? In, in in and this is by the way, all this is happening at like twelve forty five at night. Twelve forty five the day of the, the morning of the, the this whole uh, appearance. It's like our call time is eleven a.m. And and at that point, Justin, this is the crack in the seal that that makes everything collapse down. Justin says, "Well, what if we drove up and then you flew back? Because you have you have miles, right? Southwest Airlines, right around the corner. We could do this. Uh, great. Uh, it's like, oh, good point, good point. So I start uh, so I start looking into it, and it's like, well, if I'm gonna fly up, mm-hmm. how much would or if I'm gonna fly back, how much would it be to fly up? And then it, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, well." <laughs> Three times a year, car. three times a year, I'm allowed to change my companion pass holder <laughs> on Southwest Airlines. And then suddenly, this is at like 1245 after night attack. It's like, uh, 
<laughs> what if I made you my companion pass holder? And then we hopped on a plane up there and took a plane back, uh, at which point we realized horrifically that uh, the plane would leave at 6 in the morning. But <laughs> seems like you could sleep on a plane. Uh, uh, yeah. And then hijinks at the airport. My, 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 my TSA pre doesn't go through. So I have to wait in the pleb line. Brian moonwalks past security. <laughs> with his <kid. laughs> I uh, I, I'm checking my watch. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to miss this flight. I'm going to miss this flight. Like this is, I don't even know what the hell we're going to do. Cause this is the only flight that goes by the time that we're going to get to Dallas. Uh, uh, and, and initially like I have this like rising anger. I'm like, like, oh, man, look at Brian. Brian's already there. Brian's already uh, uh, in there. I bet you, like, I haven't even gotten a text from Brian. And then I'm like, well, what is he going to do? Like, jump in front of the plane and, like, <laughs> <laughs> make not take off? There's, uh, I'm trying to find it, but, but like, uh, smash cut to, uh, by the time Justin gets on the plane, he encounters an already sleeping Brian, and he sent me this amazing photo oh, of me kidding. of me asleep as the sun rises off to the <laughs> side. <laughs> and uh, uh, we ended up going uh, to, to Mercury Studios. It was fantastic. Uh, I, I... Well, though, this is really the most Brian and Justin moment. Is that we've already flown <laughs> from Austin to Dallas. At six o'clock in the morning, our call time's at eleven. So we have nothing else to do in Dallas, nor do we have a car. And we now have like three hours to kill. So yeah. what do you think we did? Oh, we, no. we we went to the airport, uh uh to the airport bar. And, and you just couldn't even find a local <laughs> bar. No. We we did it at the airport. Jesus Just Christ. hung out. We played Hearthstone side by side, and then we called an Uber. Impulsive <laughs> and financially irresponsible. Well, and, when, then, when and then when we got there, the best, part, the best part was realizing we were early. <laughs> like, well. I guess we could just drink. <laughs> well, then we uh we so we we show up we show up and they have one of those like a uh, high security grid things where it's like uh you know show your ID uh, face picture all this stuff and Justin you know beat bops all all the way in and I don't know why I mean it's something about like you know the two and a half hours of sleep and uh, uh hanging out all morning I just type in I take a picture of myself and I just type in Buttimus Wind as my name. <laughs> And so I print out a little thing on there. Like, I was like, I don't know. Come at me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give advice. Uh, yeah. Boy, ob. Boy, ob. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a hell of a time. It was great. Uh, 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 tell you what, Glenn Beck's a major cinephile. Never knew that. Uh, uh, but uh, oh, he I, is a, runs a hell of a studio. That studio looks uh, uh, insane. So uh, that is a lesson that I learned, and he nailed the Constitution to the uh, tree from the Barney set. Moving on. <laughs> so you said cinephile. Yeah, C-I-N-E. Okay. No, uh, no, he's not like a big fan of of, of uh, aberrations against God's love. Okay. That's, yeah. That's Although, a sinning oh, file. How is that not a porn? <laughs> it was a cinephile. <laughs> you were like, oh my God, it would be hotter if you also uh, blasphemed while you did it. Actually, it's probably a real thing. <laughs> so, uh, you want the usurious rate of lending? Hey, so in the spirit of, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, besmirching everybody who listens by audio, let's say what? we do a totally video based bit where I tell a story and you can see two photos. Does that sound fun? Uh, it does, it does sound fun, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, thing that happened. Uh, we, uh, uh, two nights ago, uh, we, had a, we had a quiet night. We did all day shooting um, uh, Modern Rogue, which is why I'm sunburned. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I was like, you know, Kepler gets the twitchies, he's got the crazy eyes, he wants to go for a walk, and it's like, yeah, I'm not going to walk you around this neighborhood, too much trouble, I'll take you to the property. And then Bonnie is just like, uh, well, ask the kids if they want to go, and all the kids want to go. And it's like, well, then ask me if I want to go. It's like, okay, great, you want to go. So we all go, 
And and we walk around and Penny shows us. She points to the tree. We're like, that's the tree that I want to make a tree house on. It'll be great. And it's like, great. Kepler's running to and fro all around or whatever. He's got that manic energy. And uh, and so we, we come around to uh, the where, where the pond is. And, we, and Bonnie sits down, and then I sit down next to her, and Kepler comes around. And Bonnie has the phone out. She's going to take a selfie. And she's like, oh, no, no, let's all get together. Let's all get together. So I I, I, I take Kepler, and I, and I kind of hold him up against me. So he's leaning back. You know, you know, dogs are kind of iffy on, on the whole leaning back like a yeah. baby thing, right? Uh, but but he seems cool with it. And then, and then Josie comes on over, and Bonnie snaps this selfie that is just amazing. There you go. Look at, look at that selfie. <laughs> So all of us smiling and happy, uh, <laughs> including uh, 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 Brian. You have to make sure that you post this to your Instagram. So Instagram.com slash Scam School Brian. Post this uh, uh, so people can see this uh, on audio listening or for audio people. But if I'm going to describe it, it is a very excited, smiling Bonnie, a very earnestly smiling Josie, your middle daughter, uh, a very derpy uh, 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 tongue smile with Brian, and then just as if to out derp you uh, <laughs> the herpiest derpiest face ever see yeah, yes it's so it, it is as jolly as jolly can be in that moment and then it's like ah we just wish the rest of the family was here at which point penny and and callie catch up and uh there's something about uh, as you know Kepler is a, a bit of a twitchy dog. He's very protective. He he doesn't like, you know, being snuck it's, up it's, on. Uh, uh, look, uh, Kepler, at some point in my friendship with you, <laughs> will uh, uh, evolve into walking on two hind legs and uh, rob me and then murder me. He I will, don't know what he will, he yeah. will evolve. He's a hellhound. This is a very angry dog. <laughs> he, he, will, he will evolve like a, 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 a missile firing mech arms it, and all it, this stuff, right? Just, it rise from your grave. <laughs> so, and, uh, and, and now be a bipedal death machine. So with the benefit of hindsight, we now are able to reconstruct what happened. He was on his back in an uncomfortable way being held by me, right? And he detected an approacher coming at us, but was not able to see them because I kept holding him kind of in baby style on his back. At which point he growls that that growl, the, the same warning growl he gives for, 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 for the other, for the intruder, for whatever, only he's in my hand and, 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 and I'm just like, uh, no, 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 no. And, and of course that only escalates everything. There's tension everywhere. And he's like, and, I, and I'm thinking like, uh, ah, this dog is going to bite. And, um, what was happening was both Callie and Penny were rushing up from behind to join the photo, which, to a dog who's very protective of his pack, looks an awful lot like we're being attacked. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm, Brian, I need to have a conversation with you. Yes? Because you seem to have a troubling sliding scale for <laughs> Kepler's behavior. I mean, I there is, there is all I'm saying it's is It's daughter that, related. All I'm saying is this. When I said Kepler's a very angry hell dog and I don't feel comfortable being around him, you're like, well, you know, you have a real energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's very protective of his pack, very, right? Oh, so, all right. So, so there's an energy of a person who's been to your house and has been around this dog since he was a puppy. Two little girls running to join their family is you know, very dangerous and threatening to this death machine. But please go ahead. <laughs> okay. So at this point, it's like, <laughs> oh no, what's happening? And so I sort of, I sort of, I, 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 I moved to put him and I'm like, no, Kepler, no. But, but here's the thing Bonnie caught a second <laughs> selfie at the exact moment that Kepler is losing his shit, growling and barking. I am becoming terrified for the rest of my family. He's assuming that Callie and Penny are attacking us from behind, at which point Bonnie snaps this photo. <laughs> uh so this is the same photo, but literally everybody is now terrified. Uh, uh, Josie is now looking forward, uh, looking toward Kepler. Kepler is a motion blur of uh, unbridled death 
and Brian has this this face of horror and disgust as his his glasses are are, are surely reflecting, but they almost look fogged with panic uh, uh, from what has happened in this split second. That is an amazing back and forth. You need to post these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh geez. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, folks, you can support this show at patreon.com slash night attack. Uh, we already played a whole song. You know what you get. Uh, RSS feed. Uh, uh, you, you get your custom RSS feed that gets you the pre-show and the post-show before anybody else. This congratulations will be the last time that we ever play this video because I'm going to edit together uh, a, a, a new video that we will post there between now and next week. Uh, uh, but go ahead. Uh, over there right now, patreon.com slash night attack. Uh, of course, what we do every single week is uh, the folks that either are new patrons or up their pledges, we uh, uh, single out one of you to uh, take place in this uh, delightful ritual we like to call the... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the night attack. New Patreon name chant corner hour. Hour of it. Oh damn! Where are we, Justin? I'm looking around. I don't, I, don't, I I can't tell where I am. I'm confused. Oh, Brian, you're you're in an old west saloon. Ah, well that explains the old piano music that I hear plinking away in the background. Well, good thing they have good Wi-Fi. That's why you and I are playing Hearthstone at this saloon. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, Kerplunk goes the spittoon as I uh, continue to fill in this world uh, while I play my aggro secret mage. <laughs> oh, oh, what's this? Who just kicked in the, the bat wing doors? It's a new character in town. Uh, and he says, listen up, all you people on your way to uh, the Blaze Studios. Uh, it's me. Justin Weinberg. Justin Weinberg. Justin Weinberg. Yeah, Weinberg. Justin. Justin Weinberg. Anyway, he joined us playing Hearthstone and then later uh, showed up on the Blaze with us. Hey, hey, well, hey, thank well, you for thank being you a part of a very important part of our lives, Justin Weinberg. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget the moments we've shared together. Yeah. yeah. Yet another spittoon hit for me, <laughs> as I remember my best friend in the world, Justin Weinberg. Ah, you don't remember that time that we lied so that Justin Weinberg could join us at a sleepover, and then we did the Ouija board, and we found out that, that Captain Howdy uh, approved of of uh, 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 Murloc Paladin. I I remember that, and I swear to beans that it was Justin Weinberg who put my thumb in warm water and made me piss my pants. <laughs> and then we TP to house. The end. Thank you, Justin Weinberg. You're our best friend. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, for one minute each and every week, we recognize everybody who watches us live on twitch.tv slash night attack uh, with our uh, full, uh, uh, do we know, what we, what do we call this? I the mean, we're not time? supposed to call it cam girling, uh, oh, but. Not. Okay, well, I'll just call it the one time Babcat came to town. Oh man, he was driving this crimson Zamboni. It was like, it's me, Babcat. I talk like this. I, I'm doing a, an impression of my friend W. Scottis One. Well, but that wasn't going to happen for long because Lisa J rolled in on a jet ski and said, look at me. I'll tell you like I told Dan Wally, I'll kick your ass from here to Chicago. Yeah, at which point, uh, uh, the, uh, I forget. Anyway, something Brussels-Berry. <laughs> I just want to be all dead polymers here, but if I were to give you the full picture, I would say Stoic was the squirrel who was watching this scene. Yeah, oh man, uh, uh, ah, I've got a Sutter cane in my spleen. Uh, somebody call the cops. <laughs> well, Agent Sign showed up after the cops were called and said, Look here, folks, Captain Jack will get you high again. 
<laughs> uh, that all makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Mr. Bruick. Uh, uh, thank you to everybody who watches this live. If you want to go ahead and uh, 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 do that, then we uh, we stream every Tuesday at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time. But we also like to recognize the Bit Boss. The Bit Boss. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> that is Cthulhu Collection. Or sorry, Cthulhu Collector with 1,300 bits. We will update that at the end of the show. But first, let's welcome our guest. He is. The guy from Queens. He is the Armenian assassin. Ladies and gentlemen from the Matt Men podcast and so many other programs, including What the Tech and others, it is Andrew Zarian, the pride of Bayside. Huzzah! The pride of Bayside. I'm actually, I'm actually in Brian's house right now. I, I, I was about to that. say, it, it does look like a... <laughs> is this a different set? Have you, have, you, have you changed things up? I'm in Los Angeles right now at the Ball Truth Studios. I'm in Beverly Hills. Uh, I built this monstrosity that's happening here. It's also doubling as a porn set, apparently, because this is where, if I could show you guys, my where I'm sleeping. This is where I'm sleeping right now. On the casting me. couch. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it's a uh, bizarre experience. But uh, I'm here, guys. Uh, first of all, I want to thank both of you uh, for pretty much ruining my life. I I, I was on, it, it actually, it's, it's a multitude of you guys. It's, it's Justin because he's doing 5,000 things. And he's successful, and he's doing all this stuff. Brian, you've 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 killed podcasting for the the average guy because you you've attained something that that most people will never attain, and that's this unbelievable success with your community. And uh, Tom Merritt for inviting me on his show, and Sarah Lane for convincing me that I should quit my job. Oh my gosh! So so so, so the advice I, stuck. I quit. I quit my job five minutes after I was done recording with them. I walked in. And I said, "I can't do this anymore," and it was all because of Sarah. Holy cow! So, 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 how how's it gone since then? All of a sudden, I'm terrified to hear the answer. Well, I'm. I'm I, <laughs> it's been. Listen, it, it, it's great, right? Because uh, you leave this amazing, high paying job, and you go back into podcasting. So it's it's a little bit of a uh, up, you know, an uphill battle that you got to kind of adjust to and kind of get there. But I mean, it's amazing. The community's been unbelievable, and uh, it, it's growing again. And we're doing all this stuff. But you guys, I blame all of you collectively because if it wasn't for what you guys are doing, I probably would not have quit my job. I mean, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because I want to fill in a little bit here. Yeah. You were doing podcasting and then you went to do this job, which happened to coincide with you having two kids, which – like was the crazy because you never stop podcasting. It's not like you're like, well, I'm retiring from podcasting so I can focus on my family and and take this job. You took the job and had the kids and then also did the podcasting. You were the most crazy person that I had ever seen in my yeah. entire life. And on top of that, you're one of the few people that knows what I did for a living or where I worked. <laughs> sure. Which yeah. I won't say if you don't want me to say. No, you, can, you can say it. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, 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 well, why, yeah, why don't you tell people? I don't want to. I, I was the, uh, a, a, a senior director of marketing for a, um, a place where, where men go or, and ladies go, and then they watch, uh, other women dance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I mean, it's also, it's also a steakhouse and it's also a nightclub. I mean, it's, multiple locations. It's also oh a goodness. steakhouse and a nightclub. The Swallows from Arrested Development. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I mean, not not that I have an idea of what you're alluding to, but could you tell me who's on the main stage in 30 minutes? Uh, I I couldn't because I was never there. Oh, uh, but my wife was there a lot, and she probably could have told you. <laughs> right on. <laughs> uh, it, it was a it was a really fun job for everybody except for me. Because everybody got to enjoy the perks of, you know, uh, in going out and entertaining people in this crazy environment. Uh, except for me, because I actually, I took my job seriously. And then uh, my podcast started suffering, obviously, because it's impossible to do everything. And I started sucking at podcasting. So I had a, um, a moment of clarity. And that was uh, Sarah Lane uh, convincing me how, how that long I ago quit my job. She did nothing. She never said quit your job. But we were talking about podcasting on the show and how much enjoyment we get out of it. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing right now? Yeah. So, so, so how long ago did this happen? Like, like, like how uh, recent? October. 
Holy cow! Yeah, congratulations, man. So, so <laughs> how? Yeah, this this all came together so fast because I, I think I I was at Dragon Con, and somebody that works with Andrew came and uh, 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 met us after one of our panels, Brian, at at Dragon Con, and uh, I was like, oh, well, don't tell Andrew he's a psychopath. Uh, for for doing everything that he's doing, like like there, like I I look at my life and I'm like, oh my god, I got to take things away from the schedule. And he's like, nah, you want to know what? Another day gig, and you know, uh, you know, if another kid slips out, who cares, right? Like <laughs> another kid, kid slips out. out. Andrew's Aryan. Uh, I I just picture like a kid showing up crying, and and Andrew's like, damn it, woman, I told you to keep keep them legs crossed. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. He's like, I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm, uh, apparently Armenians grow leg hair in hours in the day because uh, uh, I have infinite of both. If, if I concentrate enough, it just happens. <laughs> I'm straight out. Well, no, but I mean, it, it's been it's been wild and getting back into this thing. It's nuts because we have such a crossover of our audiences, you know, oh, between Batman and what Brian does and what you, you do, Justin. Uh, and it, it's great. Like the support I got immediately when I said that I quit my job. I mean, the Patreon started coming in and people started, uh, I mean, it, it just became unbelievable. And I, and I kind of, I was, I was, um, you know, I was considering coming on, but I didn't really ask it. And when I got an email about the summer movie draft, which I was, I missed in replying, I replied with like, listen, I'd love to come on and thank these guys because, uh, it's unbelievable what, what, what you guys have done here. And, and really a lot of me, uh, leaving and doing this stuff and, and it has a lot to do with you guys. Uh, uh, well, dude, we're 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 all we're all siblings in the growing up in the same class, and and it's so awesome to to see you doubling down. We've we've seen a lot of friends, you know, dabble in the world of podcasting who have uh, given up for no, uh, more noble pursuits. But it's good to see you as crazy as you ever were, and uh, uh, that makes me very very happy. I'm I'm even I'm even nuttier now with two kids. Uh, I've I've really lost my mind. Um, this was like an, on on a whim to come to California. I had to, I got a call and I, and I told my wife, I'm like, Hey, I think I want to go to LA on Monday. She goes, okay, no problem. I got the kids covered. Don't worry about it. I I, I, in my mind, I was assuming that the story began with like, you were going to drive to LA, but then last minute you decided <laughs> to fly the day of. I'm not that, I'm, I haven't lost my mind to that level. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Well, the, before we get into the game, uh, uh, Andrew, uh, Plug everything that's on Guys from Queens Network, and and uh, I know that you have totally redoubled your efforts on uh, Matt Men, and you got WrestleMania Week uh, uh, coming up uh, in New York, which I'm sure you're going to do uh, a million different things for. So tell everybody about Guys from Queens. Uh, GFKeynetwork.com. We're, we're putting out a whole bunch of shows still. Uh, my two babies are, are Matt Men, something that Justin is a regular on, he, uh, or, or was. I haven't had you on in a long time because of everything going on, but Justin used to come on all the time, and uh, that's my... That's one of my favorite shows to do because it talks about, uh, you know, just oiled up, greased up muscle men tussling because who doesn't want to talk about that for an hour and a half every single week? And then, of course, uh, What the Tech with Mr. Paul Therod. And and let me just float this out there because I know that there's a bunch of people that listen that are that are wrestling fans. There are a few ways to be famous in the world of wrestling, at least in terms of the press, right? Either you are a former wrestler and you are telling old stories and talking to old friends or you are a rumor merchant. You are somebody that is telling the behind the scenes stories and what might happen. Now, Andrew Zarian was previously just a guy who talked about stuff. He was a guy who gave his opinion. He was very, very good at it. Matt Men is a fantastic podcast. But lately, whenever I tune in or, or I catch something on, on uh, social media, you, you've moved into the rumor merchant world. I've, I've become a Dave Meltzer. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it, it's amazing because people start listening to the show and then it gains a little bit of popularity. And then people in, as they call it in wrestling, in New York listen. And then they just, I feel like everybody just wants to spill the beans of what's happening there. And they don't know how to say it or who to say it to. So occasionally uh, I get reports of everything happening or, or reports of things that were supposed to happen or will happen. And I very carefully, based on what I'm told I can and can't say, I'll talk about it on the show. Uh, do, do you have any example, any, any, anything that you would like to tell the audience here on Night Attack? Uh, what can I? Uh, nothing about WrestleMania, because I'll get my, my tickets pulled. 
I was told if I spill any beans <laughs> about like, WrestleMania. Like, listen, if, if, if WrestleMania were in Arizona, I'll tell you who's going over in a main event. But yeah. if it's in MetLife, I want to go, so I'm going to keep that to myself. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head recently because I've been so busy with it. But I, I was 100% right on Bill Goldberg coming back. Oh, that was and two years ago. That was two years ago. Good job. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I, we're, 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 get, we're getting a wrestling rumor out of you before the okay. end of the show. All right, all right, let, me, let, me, let me look up what I could say, and I'll give you look, one by the end. Look up what you can say. Bryce, what's our game tonight? Hey, we got a brand new game uh, this week. Uh, I want to give credit to Yabs, who uh, posted about uh, this idea in, uh, in the Discord, nightattack.tv slash Discord. Uh, and also uh, someone on Twitter, I don't know the, who it was, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, someone on Twitter had this fun idea. We are going to play, I need a name for this. We can workshop a name in 60 seconds. In real time. In Got real it. time. Got it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the, uh, you know how uh, everyone has a, you know how on Wikipedia they give you like a little table of contents sure. under your name? I'm going to give you a crop of someone's table of contents and you're going to have to tell me which celebrity that table of contents is. Oh yeah, man! And so you guys are gonna be. It'll be the three. It'll be the three or four of you if Bonnie wants to play it against me. Oh wow! Uh, uh. That's right. So uh, so it, think about titles. We're gonna do a real quick example round. Okay. Uh, our example question. Uh, there the crop is three. Personal life: marriage to Mimi Rogers, marriage to Nicole Kidman, dating Penelope Cruz, and Nazan. Oh, I got Bonnie this one. Well. And marriage to Katie Holmes. Yeah, no, that that that's that's got to be uh, uh, President uh, Barack Hader. Obama. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. <laughs> uh, who had me over on both of us not giving a real answer? <laughs> no, that that's Tom Cruise for sure. That's Tom Cruise. It's definitely yeah. uh, one uh, Tom Cruise, Thomas J. Cruise. I don't know his middle name. So there you go. That's the game. We don't have a name for it, but that's the game that we're playing. You guys ready for this? Yeah. But indeed. All right, so we're gonna go into round one again. This is uh, all all of you against me, so everyone's gonna get like one serious guess. Okay. okay. Uh, here's holy cow. That tells me this is hard. If he's throwing I out like know. four just straight up guesses, we'll all see. Right, some right. of these, some of these, I I expect will be gotten. Some of these not. Uh, Brian, can you read out this? Uh, this. Uh, oh, this the table of contents reads as the following: early life, career, subheading. Advertising, okay. initial screenwriting success, law and order, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med, and Chicago Justice, FBI, other work, honors, political involvement, future projects. Reg back to regular heading, sure. filmography, references, and external links. All right, so this one should be pretty easy. I mean, I, I assume Dick Wolf because he's the name that you always see at the end of the... Uh, oh. Oh, that's right. There oh, we go. Oh, that's, oh. See, it's an easy game. Oh, that's yeah, Dick Wolf. I, I, don't, I don't believe you for a second. <laughs> Any oh, more than... Way, Babcat, I like, I like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is <laughs> pretty good. That's I like that. That's good. Okay, this one... Uh, 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 Justin, if you can read this on... Uh, you can kind of run through it a little bit. This one's maybe a little bit longer. Uh, uh, one of the longer ones. Uh, early life, family, primary and secondary school years, undergraduate years, graduate years, career, 1966 to 1975, 1975 to 1990, 1990 to 2000, 2000 to 2018, personal life, marriages, disability, disability outreach, plans for a trip to space, death, personal views, future of humanity, science versus philosophy, religion and atheism, politics, and appearance in popular media. There we go. Oh, dude, I got this one. You guys go first. I'm I, ready. Yeah, I, I, I believe that uh, this is, is this uh, Stephen Hawking? This is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> hey -o! There we go. All right. So that's- Look, uh, we got this. This is the easiest game price. ever. This game is really easy. Mm -hmm. Super uh, easy. Uh, so how about this? We just go Family Feud style, where now it's 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 what Andrew's are you doing? turn. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Easy. Justin, easy. what are you doing? You're falling right into his trap. You're walking in. You're no, like. No trap, Brian. It's not a trap when we're whipping his ass uh, so uh, uh, thoroughly. Uh, you're, you're, just, you're just walking. You're dancing around like a fly inside of his jaws. He's going to clamp down shut. You're going to be stuck inside. You're going to no. be screaming uh, no. as his bile comes up and melts you alive. He's going to digest you and use your Brian. nitrogen. I will escape the Grim Reaper forever. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! your own. Okay, sure, Andrew. This one, this one's for you. If you can uh, just read this out for me a little bit. This is at uh, your Wikipedia. 
Okay, so life, family, and early childhood, teenage years, early influences in writing, adulthood, and I can't see that word. Uh, early seclusion. 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 Okay, because I'm I'm staring at a screen ten miles away from me. <laughs> uh, seclusion in my verse alive. Is my verse so, alive? Is my verse? Uh, you know what? You're better off here. I go. Uh, I, I can't the woman, it. the woman in white. Po uh, posies and poesies, later life, decline and death, publication, contemporary and posthumous, poetry on structure and syntax, major themes, reception, and legacy, and modern influence and inspiration. Hey, man, look, real quick, Andrew, just to remind you, this game's super easy. Both me and Justin have proven it. Uh, I, yeah. uh, surely you can do the same. <laughs> yeah, I, oh my God. Super I, easy. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I honestly have no clue about that one. All right, uh, Brian and Justin, any any clue, any 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 hints? Bryce, this is so easy. I refuse to even give you. You the don't answer. even want to work it out. Just <laughs> it's a little so bit, easy. maybe. Just some of the clues maybe in front Bonnie, of me. maybe Bonnie uh, uh, can handle this one. Is this Harper Lee? Is not Harper <gasps> Lee, but that's uh, oh, close. Oh, he, than, he almost said it was. It was close. He almost said it was close. Almost closer than the previous answer of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god this is like exactly my worst nightmare this is everybody in middle school and they were all talking about the latest movie and that guy that was playing the lead actor and then like they all knew the name i'm like who's that mm -hmm. who's, who's that is tom cruise that's who it was it's tom cruise it's tom cruise okay it's still not tom Clark, cruise. good answer good uh, answer uh, good answer uh, oh uh, all right. Any any last takers on this one? Uh, uh, you know, what, I'm, like I, what, what I know the, the answer, oh. but on principle, I'm not going. I mean, if 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 the rest of the team can't pull it off, I don't. You do know the oh, you're Bonnie, full come of on. shit. Bonnie, that is your Bonnie, full of shit. You know I know the answer. No, you don't. You, uh, all right. This okay. is your life phase. Uh, look. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, hold on. Wait. 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 But 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 Bryce has to guess, right? But I know the answer. This is this is you against me. So, oh, we're just we're just. It's not us against you. It's yes. us against the answer. Yes. Yes. yes we've done yes. many games like this. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, we get unlimited guesses. No, can, you get can four. Can we go back to the Tom Cruise question? Because that was really easy. All right. That's it. Your time's up. <laughs> oh, I got it. We were looking for Miss Emily Mid Dickinson. Emily Dickinson. Oh, uh, oh, gee, I said it right as you said it. Oh, I, uh, unfortunate. Pretty much the I already same. Hit the pitfall thing. You know? But that did prove Isn't that I knew it. I knew alive? it. Yeah, I mean, look, I just I know, know a lot that. of things. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he definitely knew <sighs> that one, Bonnie. All <laughs> right. <laughs> better, be, be, better than Shane, Dick, and Pat. You didn't, you didn't right? know it. I don't know what you're talking about. I definitely knew it. Do we know it? I super duper knew it. Webster's Dictionary defines comedy as. All right. <laughs> Fourth round. Uh, we got early life career, stand up career, MTV and film career, discography, filmography, and references and external links. Discography. Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 who was the girl that could rap that hung out with Prince? Uh, Carmen Electra. Carmen Electra. Oh, no, 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 no. Colin Quinn. Oh, Colin Quinn. That's mm. that's how I pronounce it. It is neither. I will say I, Colin I, Quinn is closer. I'm going to oh, say, with the chat saying, because it was also what I was going to say, but Adam Curry, because it's related oh, to the chat. Oh, interesting. No, no not All right, Adam to our, Curry. Yeah. Not Adam Curry. I, I think uh, oh, Colin I, Quinn's closer. I, I, may, I may have this. Oh, oh. oh. Go. I may have this. Please go. John Stewart. Ooh, new. We were looking for... Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta get them. We were looking for Polly Shore. Oh. Polly Shore. The Weasel! Weasel! Wow. God damn it. See? Okay. Hey, Andrew, I, I think I think uh, John Stewart's table of contents might have had a few stops in between. Yeah, <laughs> like like maybe I mean, acknowledging his late night career in some form. I mean, maybe we're skipping. Maybe we're just skipping ahead. <laughs> you know, just summing it up. He's done a couple movies. He was on MTV. He's done comedy. Okay, that guy. Exactly. Right. It was it was uh, 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 you wrote it. We made it, uh, <laughs> and then half baked. And who cares? What else? Yeah. No, I will say, yeah, I great, uh, someone I in the chat Paul got it. Story, if you want it. Uh, oh, you do? Please. I saw him fall out of an. I saw him fall out of an Uber, in the middle of 34th and 7th, and the Uber driver pulled him out and just threw him on the on the curb. This Sorry. was maybe six, seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago, something like that. 
This was Polly Shore. How how Polly certain Shore. were you? Like 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 was he wow. was he in the middle of saying like you can't do that to me? I'm Polly Shore. <laughs> Looking around for no, cameras. I'm wheezing people. the juice. <laughs> he was with people, and they kept telling the Uber driver, "Do you know who this is? This is Polly Shore." It's pretty oh, good. Geez. You're doing this to Polly Shore over yeah. and over again. D uh, what star from the Weasel? Were, were any of you guys dialed in when he put together that um, uh, that hoax of getting punched on stage? Mm -mm, I missed that. Oh, none of you guys saw that? So so there was... Um, it wasn't uh, on his Wikipedia. I want to say it was like 20 <laughs> minutes after Michael Richards uh, went on an, an inward uh, rampage. Sure. Like... Like he smelled opportunity in the air and decided, oh wait, so uh, cell phone videos are a thing. Well, uh, and he gets up on stage to do his stand-up act, and he's like, hey, let's fake like somebody's offended by what I'm saying and punches me. So you guys all are gonna react, and they rehearse it a couple times. And mm -hmm. he he had like a, a dude in a cowboy hat in West Texas, like he's up there, like anyway. So I'm wheezing the juice, and uh, and then a guy <laughs> comes up and he's like, whoa, whoa, what is this, man? They're like. Don't hit me. You're not going to hit me, are you? And then he, he, you know, fake punches him and he goes down. And you guys didn't see that? No. Yeah. Cute. That's got to still be on the internet, right? Yeah, no. Some, somebody can find it in the chat. Yeah, someone in, finds it. We'll play five it. seconds. Wasn't yeah. it Polly Shore that was at my at my school? At your school? Yeah. Did I uh, tell you? Is one of, is Polly Shore or the other guy? Or the other guy. <laughs> John yeah. Stewart or Polly no, Shore? No, it wasn't John Stewart. <laughs> he graduated from Beverly Hills High School, no college listed. Yeah. Uh, was it was he performing or Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, like uh, it was the worst performance. Not like as a performer now thinking about the conditions under which he had to perform i was i'm so sorry for this guy but it was just like down like by the river oh, here and it there is. was this like 20 people showed up and it was not good <laughs> Come up here. No, 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 bro. What the fuck? Dude, stop. Stop, stop. That's good sorry. acting. I'm sorry, bro. I know, but he was fucking talking during my show. Everybody else has been talking to. Well, you know what? That's fucking how it is. Sometimes people gotta shut the fuck up. Danny! Danny! <laughs> oh, that wasn't even a great sell on that punch. Oh, and then the cops arrive. The cops, by the way, are right on hand, stroll right up. Apparently not in too much of a hurry. <laughs> I'm going to say, look, I'm not trying to be a critic here, but the dialogue was a little sweaty. We probably could have run that back. Uh, apparently there's footage of like him setting all that up and everything as well. But 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 I, I that's wild yeah, that you guys. Um, uh, Wait, uh, what year is that, though? I want to say this like is 2008, two, seven or something. 2006. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The uploader says, this is not real. It was a joke. I was there. Smiley face. Mm -hmm. All right. What, is, what are we on? Round five. Round five. All right. Here we go. Your Wikipedia is public image, leadership style, recognition, wealth, personal life, politics, philanthropy, and see also. Starting on the third. It starts with number three. What what sticks out? What sticks out? What are your hints? Leadership style, like like mm. all of a sudden I'm thinking of all the people that I could think of. You know, your Steve Jobs or your um, uh, your uh, what? Uh, uh, I feel like Brian. This is in your wheelhouse. This is this is like yeah. somebody that you might know from the 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 like self help world. Well, the problem is that. Um, uh, I, I, I keep being really dialed in on all the stuff that's not there, right? So if it's Steve Jobs, you would think they would mention the iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or yeah, Apple this, or something. This is a rich, a rich guy. I mean, because everybody that I know that's rich or that was a CEO, mm -hmm. like you would think that there would be like, like if it was like Lee Iacocca, there would be something about a car. I will say yeah. you, you can, uh, I will give you a free hint. This starts at heading number three. Usually the first few headings uh, will include early life or personal life or career. Uh, and I can tell you that the career has been clipped out of this one because it would be very obvious. Huh. Um, public image oh, also leadership politics. Style. Politics is on here, sure. Yeah. Somebody, okay, somebody who's known for barking about. Uh, Ooh, you want to know what? What? Uh, uh, Warren Buffett. 
Warren Buffett seems like a good Public case. image, leadership style, recognition, wealth, personal life, politics, philanthropy. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I'm going to double down. Uh, I, uh, let's say Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is incorrect, but close. No. Close. It's another rich white dude. Wow. Think of Wait, the richest, whitest dude you can think of. You still have, like... A bunch more. You sell yeah, more we, we have three more coupons. Listen, we have to come together. We got a Voltron yeah. up. Listen up, people. We need to be the Voltron of rich white dudes. Uh, yeah. a, a, a form wow. of uh, Warren Buffett. Uh, a shape of Bill Gates. Uh, 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 attitude of uh, Tony Robbins. Uh, uh, something, something, Ross Perot. You're killing your time with your metaphor. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, what do you got, man? I mean, I would say Mark Cuban. I would say... I don't know. Rich guys, leadership style. White, rich it, it, guys, it, it, rich white guys. Don't bat your eyes at me, you rich white guy. I'm just singing I'm just a saying, ragtime song about rich white guys. I'm just saying maybe your ragtime song is killing our time. <laughs> maybe maybe his father gave him a small loan of a million dollars. No way. Wouldn't it have yeah, like <laughs> the president? I don't, I don't think I don't think his his generosity would be listed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, but maybe we could go to another New Yorker. How about a uh, good old uh, Mayor Bloomberg? Bloomberg, maybe? Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. Mm. Bloomberg. Show me Bloomberg. Uh, no. I'd probably say Warren Buffett is closer if Richer. Think bit. richer. Richer. Oh, Do you think richer. I, I kind of know what this is. I kind of right. know. Okay. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. I kind of know. Hold on. I, right. It's, it's manifesting in my head. I swear to God, Zarian, if you don't say it, Brian will start singing ragtime again. <laughs> Brian, start singing ragtime. Hold on. It's, it's, it's brewing in my head. The name isn't coming to me. <laughs> Can I make a guess? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, You're in this game. Facebook dude? Facebook dude. Facebook dude. Uh, Mark? Yeah. Mark. No, no. Mark. Facebook dude. Show me Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg is... Super close, but still not right. You guys ah, have one more. Richer, wider. Right, Come right. on. I got, Listen I got, I got up. You've richest. got to be thinking richer and wider than that. Oh, oh. Is it, I got is, the richest. Is I it? got the richest. Oh, who is Go. it? George Soros. No, that, there'd be way more in the politics category. All right, all right, that's no. three. We have one. We have. Okay, you go. We got one last chance to pick right. a rich white no, guy. No. They said they said Zuckerberg, so it has to be somebody in Silicon Valley because he said it was really really close. Maybe it is Elon Musk. Is it, is it Elon Musk? Wait. I'm putting thirty seconds on the clock. Wait. Get, it, it, pick, it, pick it, pick it, pick it. It's, it's all in your court. Elon Musk. No, not Elon Musk. Oh. Twenty seconds. Oh, oh wait, oh, we get uh, uh, Bill Gates. No, not Bill Gates. Uh, 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 George Soros again. No, what'd you say, Andrew? <laughs> I, I was gonna go with Bill Gates. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm no, took it right out of me. The seconds. Zappos dude. Not oh, uh, oh Tony Shea. Not Tony Shea. Steve Jobs. Not Steve Jobs. Five seconds. I, 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 oh, I, I, Amazon I, guy. Products. See, products. What? Tim Cook. Tim, no. Tim <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you only because Brian said Amazon guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew snuck it in at the very last second. It was. Hey, he's an Amazon guy. <laughs> is Jeffrey Preston Bezos. <laughs> very good work. Oh, you are a kind and just judge. <laughs> that was a nice assist, by the way. That was a very nice assist there. Yep. Amazon guy. divorce his wife and take a picture of his dick. He's the Amazon guy. Wait, wait, wait. What were the first two, though? <laughs> what do you mean divorced first two? Divorced his uh, wife and took a picture of his dick. No, 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 no. She, She's talking about on the table of contents. First two are no, like, I don't know. They're going to be early life and career, <laughs> usually. Picture oh, okay. of the dick and two was divorced his wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we... he, he, did get, he did get divorced? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right, here's another one for you. Early life, career, business ventures, Jill Jet. Oh, I know this vintage one. Vintage Nudes that one. Studio. That was a slam dunk. Personal life, red fingernail, appearances, filmography, and television. In fact, Justin and I are going to step back. We'll rescue yeah. you if you need it. 
but uh, I would love to see if Bonnie and Andrew can uh, figure this one out. You go yeah. for it, Andrew. Uh, first of all, vintage Andrew has nude studios? Yes. Yeah. Who who has vintage nude studios? This person. Yeah. Know it when you get it. <laughs> oh my god. Red fingernail. Oh he's wait. He's done film, he's done television. Bonnie might have it? I think uh, I do. Is it is it Teller? Oh. No, no, I mean is it uh Pintalet? <laughs> Cuz he used to have it. It is Pendulet. Yeah. It is. Uh, it, it is. I was going to go with Doug Henning. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know what th- you know what threw me off and 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 Bonnie got it, but when I said, he, who has a nude vintage studio? And Brian goes, and he didn't laugh. He took it very seriously, mm. and he sat on it. And I, and that's when I knew it had to be Penn Gillette. Ah. Well played, sir. Ah. Or Sean Penn. <laughs> or Sean Penn. That's two. I what knew a... it was a pen. There was a pen. <laughs> All right, so that's a, oh, that's a point for you guys. Here we go. Uh, number seven. Number seven. All right, here we go. Musicianship with the subheaders, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, vocals, keyboards, drums, tape loops, and early influences. Lifestyle with creative outlets, business, drugs, vegetarianism and activism, meditation and football under it. And personal relationships, including girlfriends and wives. Hold on. Uh, okay. Wow. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Hey, it's all ring a do, isn't it? It's about well, being you think, you think alive. It's, McCartney? It's, about, it's about it's about the power of the female vagina, isn't it? It's so <laughs> it's so beautiful. Now it's, the only thing that, that that would throw me off is the football. That's how where I mean I could love football too, can't I? Uh, but, it's Ricky Gervais. I, I'm 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 aware that football is soccer. I've just <laughs> known uh, uh, Paul McCartney to be that. I would think. It might be somebody I, else if it's not him, but go ahead. I, I'm almost convinced it is because he does uh, transcendental meditation. Yeah. And it's there. He's a vegetarian and he's an activist. Uh, I, he's had girlfriends and wives. And <laughs> Definitely did drugs. Every, and he's done drugs. I mean, we're covering if it's not. I want. It's impossible. There's no two yeah, perfect yeah. matches in this universe. Uh, I I think I might know somebody else. And okay, I think well, well, here I'll go. I'll go first. I'll sure. spend my. I'll spend my yeah. my ticket. Uh, Paul McCartney. Oh! It is Paul McCartney. That's right. uh, did you ever the, the listen to other, this? The only other person I would have thought would have been Elton John, and that would be at five point three. It would have been husbands. Did uh, yeah? Uh, did did you ever hear his techno album? Uh, he he did a uh, techno album or like kind of a trance thing. The Beeples uh, un, under the name uh, uh, the Fireman, M A N. Strawberries, oceans, ships, forest. I think was the name of the album, and it was I swear to God, sixteen tracks of the exact same song with just different samples uh, on it. It it was. Uh, uh, I still hear it haunting my dumb, <laughs> stupid brain. It was like, uh, doo, number doo, one, doo, I have doo, never doo, heard doo. of that, uh, but it is amazing, and I need to hear it. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. So well, the way you're saying it makes me seem like I want to run into a haunted house that's already killed all your. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it's it's fine for I, what it is. I really think we need to hear a sample. I, 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 can I, we do that? This, this sounds like an like an after show thing. Wow, yeah. that was ninety three. That was even early. Yeah, for that, all. That was when I, I I guess I was freshman year of college at the time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is uh, number eight. Number eight. We're you're close to being over the hump. So let's see if you can. Uh, you can get more than halfway on this one. Here we go. Where's my name? <laughs> music career, early musical projects, a blanked out header, collaboration with other artists, how to destroy angels as an independent artist, video games and film composition, business activity, suit and countersuit with John Mall. I got this. And Beats Music for Ian. This is Trent Reznor. That's 100% true. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Trent Reznor did the uh, soundtrack to the original uh, Quake, and uh, right. he also did the soundtrack to uh, uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. That's right. There we go. Uh, and and then worked with Beats, because like really, if you're looking at like notable artists that worked with Beats, it's Dr. Dre and Trent Reznor. There we go. 
All right, this one's a little bit long, so I'm going to start reading it. You call in when uh, when you think you got it. If you think you got it. How about that? Domestic policy, economic policy, family planning and population policy, housing, human rights, universities, December 2006 student protest, nuclear program, domestic criticisms and controversies, accusations of corruption, other statements, the UN and football stadiums, constitutional conflict, Ali Cordon, conflict with parliament, relations with supreme leader of Iran, Hugo Chavez. Oh, yeah, general. yeah. Th th this has to be uh, Venezuela, right? Mm, I. Oh, no, no, I guess foreign relations, it says Venezuela. So, foreign relations. <laughs> I'm there. Uh, Whoops. Israel, Palestine, United States, Venezuela. After presidency, 2017 presidential election and 2017 to 18 Iranian protests. So this would probably be somebody, certainly somebody in the Middle East. Like Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, Oh, no, but they went to Hugo it. Chavez's funeral. <laughs> is it Fact Rick Santorum? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Fat Rick Santorum. 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 Where have you been? Uh, 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 don't you know everybody's gearing up for the next election cycle? <sighs> fat, fat Rick. I'm gearing up too, Brian. <laughs> oh, 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 what's what's going on? Well. I'm going to challenge Donald Trump. Oh, you're, you're going to take out Donald Trump? Well, I'm going to challenge him to an eating contest. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you sure you have what it takes? Because it sounds like he's pretty legendary when it comes to a McDonald's order. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to just go ahead and stick my head right under the chocolate fountain. <laughs> hey, get in here, bitch. I'll fucking drive you with this shit, and then I'll eat all the chocolate. I win. Ha ha. You know, is that most chocolate fountains you've, what, tapped? Like, how does... I drank them all dry. <laughs> I wasn't good at running for president, but I drank a chocolate fountain until... <laughs> Empty Creek, man. Uh, well, thank you so much, Fat Rick Santorum. Thank you, Fat uh, Rick. Good luck in the presidential elections. <laughs> I'm going to go eat a whole sheet cake. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. A lot of our friends are back tonight. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So we have a number of different topics here. Are any of these uh, hints, uh, any of these uh, kind of standing out to you as uh, possible? So, so, so conflict with Parliament. Sure, 5, would 7. Would me 6. mean he's not, it's not an American... Like Tony uh, Blair or something? Leader. Yeah. It's not an American leader. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the 2006 student protest, but I, 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 I'm leaning toward Middle East. I think that the, that the student protests were in Iran. I'm going to go with uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. But, and, and plus also, it definitely says after presidency, which would take out Tony Blair as he was prime minister. Yeah. I believe Ahmadinejad was the president of Iran. But not in 2007. Well, that's after presidency. Not in 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, but that was after presidency. Yeah, like he probably he had something to say after about that. After presidency. Yeah, uh, yeah Mahmoud Ahmadinejad would... Uh... Yeah, uh, the only thing that makes me not make him uh, that is that they don't have uh, 10 uh, random career as Twitter sports hot take artist, which is the most <laughs> random thing that's ever happened on Twitter, is Mahmoud Ahmadinejad having hot takes on Colin Kaepernick. That's a weird sight. It is weird, but it's also. Yeah. Well done, team. There you go. Look at that. You guys are you guys are destroying the game. I thought this would be a little more difficult. No, we're we're really smart. That's one thing. When people think of Night Attack, they think those guys they're really those smart. Those guys know a lot about Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. <laughs> yeah. They're they're like one time they figured out how to fly to Dallas instead of drive. <laughs> It just involved changing a companion pass. Yeah, that's all it was, really. Okay, we've got uh, Did two you more. notice who was really quiet during that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're not you're not down with the uh, with with the Iranian politics, Bonnie? No. I'll tell you what, man. You get to uh, impressionists. We're we're gonna get schooled though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, here's number ten. 
Early life, college football and athletics career, professional football I know this, career. I know this. Buffalo Bills, San Francisco 49ers. I think they're leaving out. There's, career there summary. are the 4 through 12 that are left <laughs> off. <laughs> NFL records and career statistics. Ryan Orenthal, James Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There yeah, there was, a, there was a bit more on that. Catalog. Yeah, it kind of goes a little <laughs> further after hey, that. I'll tell you what, that's crazy that the uh, O.J. Simpson category was also slashed to pieces. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, my gosh. Wait, is he still alive? People, he cut his wife's head right off. They made a bunch uh, yeah, of documentaries Yeah, I believe he's, he's alive and free that's now. That's right, he's a 71 years old. What? He, he, like... He murdered a person, and now he's free. Two, two, two people. He, he murdered allegedly people. murdered a person, that, and he was acquitted. By a fair yep. and a jury, a jury of his people. We words. do not need to relitigate the Orenthal James Simpson case right now in the year of our Lord 2019. Yeah, but yeah. but didn't he like like do a robbery and like have like a he sword? Also, he, he did thing? a rap, and he also was in the Naked Gun. And uh, he, he also did a uh, a, a prank show <laughs> called "You Got Juice." That's right, Juice. <laughs> juice. That the the punchline of every prank was. That he was O.J. Simpson. <laughs> like, that's a real thing. <laughs> I would love for O.J. to have a podcast that's in the serial style of him trying to find the real killer. Oh. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, now that's going to happen because you I just mean, made it uh, happen. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody will tell O.J. he can just take voice memos on the golf cart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Last one, and this one's going to be for, oh, I don't know, seven points. Oh, my gosh. This one's a little bit long, so I'm going to start reading. You just call in if you think you got it. All right. Early life, career, riverboat education, Chicago and recording for Gennett in the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra, the Hot Five. Hot, yeah. Emerging as a vocalist, working during hard times, reviving jazz with the All-Stars, and a jazz ambassador. In personal life, pronunciation of name. Family, personality, lip problems, nicknames, race, religion, personal habits, writing, social organizations, and then finally, music. Uh, 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 what do you what, uh, show your work? This one's so obvious that I'll leave it to Andrew. <laughs> uh, is, is it? It's Louis Armstrong. Is it Louis Armstrong? Bam. Oh! <laughs> I called it. I called it. Down. That's right. Hey, look wow. at that. Dude, that was a great game. That was, that, that, was that, that was a lot more exciting than I had expected. That's yeah, awesome. That was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you to Yabs for, for posting this idea in our Shiny Toys channel of the Discord, nightattack.tv slash Discord, and at Veltman on Twitter, uh, who posted the original idea that Yabs posted. If you have an idea for a game or a concept, you have some data, a list for me, uh, send it in mail at nightattack.tv, uh, and if we use it, we will send you a free sticker pack from stickers or diaf.com. I, I have a name. Yeah? The Celebrity Table. The Celebrity Table. Um, I, I, I don't know. I like Wikipedia. Like, which which person is it on oh, Wikipedia? Oh, which yeah. yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was like... Pointy like hat. like like casting spells. No, but hold on, wait. Now I like if you were the celebrity table is a good name. If if you were going to make like a television show called the Celebrity Table, Bonnie, what would that television show be? The Celebrity Table. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Describe the show. Oh, just, pitch, just yeah, just randomly muse like, like what? Hey, would listen, a, uh, we're so thrilled that you made it all the way out here to Hollywood, Las Vegas. Right. Uh, here we are. Yeah. We we all uh, we all canceled canceled our two o'clocks, but we're all here. Oh, uh, what do you got for us? Yes, under this silver dish, ta da! <laughs> It's when I was into hip hop in the eighties, and then it's just like a celebrity, a celebrity. Um, a uh, chef actually designs food around <laughs> that table line, you know, table content item. So they'd be like, yeah, this represents um, um, hip hop in the eighties. <laughs> Look how it's got beats and, and, and it actually has beats, you know, it has like red beats. And they go, well, what's under the next dish? Oh, actual B E T S. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then name that celebrity by the way uh, who is that 
Hip hop eating beats. beats. Dr. Dre. <laughs> yeah. Hip hop eating beats. You see? Okay. Isn't that beats. great? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that beats that with would, Dr. Dre. That would be a great dynamic is to you're in a pitch meeting and you flip the script and you're like asking him like so who is it who is it and then they're like well we really appreciate your time you're like that doesn't sound like an answer <laughs> uh, uh, answer it answer it what are you scared and then and then they like answer and it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong you're just like yeah and then you just go hand them a hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> and you're like hey congratulations kid i think you're gonna go far and you just march on off <laughs> would kill in the room. Bonnie would kill in the room. <laughs> All right. You want to know how else you can kill uh, by heading on over to Diamond Time. Diamond Time is where you can shout out your projects right here on the show. Just head on over to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. It's a post that is sticky right up at the top of the page. We begin with snowshoe.woot. Hey, y'all. Snowshoe here. Missed out on some sweet, sweet merch from South by So Wasted. We'll wait no longer because it's finally available online. Head on over to bit.ly slash SXSO Wasted 2019. Uh, thank you for your support. That is bit.ly slash SXSO Wasted 2019. Hells yeah. Uh, also, we got from Thin Ink. Says, hey all, Diamond Club. I'm not usually the type of person to ask for help, but I'm in quite a sticky situation. If anyone is able to help in any way, it would be very much appreciated. YOLO420.com slash please help. Oh, so <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Fucking got harambe on her own goddamn show. God damn it. <laughs> Bonnie is thrilled beyond words. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, everybody go to that URL if you want to see. We got got. By the way, yeah. This Yolo is our version of the circle game. It's the best thing ever. God damn it. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, kings to you, Thin Ink, for taking a premium domain on the YOLO 420 uh, <laughs> uh, for your Harambe. Uh, well played, sir. Uh, and finally, Keter81 says, hey, guys and gals, Keter here. My friends and I started a YouTube channel for gaming. Yeah, I know there's too many already. But what I need is feedback on the format and production quality. Not the type of content. Not fishing for subs that won't watch. Just need honest feedback on the production. I know y'all won't troll me. Check it on out at YOLO420.com slash feedback. Click a random video and let me know if the sound or editing sucks. Dude, it looks pretty good from what I'm seeing on the visuals. I'm just glad it's not fucking Harambe. <laughs> Uh, by the way, if you want to shout out your project, head on over to diamondclub.reddit.com. You'll see a big old fat sticky post right up top. Put your shout, uh, product, uh, project on there and we'll shout it out. There. That's the thing. Indeed. Hey, uh, shall we check in on the movie draft? Indeed. We uh, should. We don't have a movie draft minute, but here's where we're standing right now. Uh, number uh, tied for second place is Night Attack, Sword yeah. Laser, Frog Pants, Grant from the Beerist, and Team Hammerson with Boom. zero dollars. And in first place, Team John Trekker with Captain Marvel bringing in $270 million. It's also Team John Trekker. <laughs> hey, Justin Robert Young. A lot of money. Yeah. What, a lot, uh, lot of money for Captain Marvel. Wait, what, 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 did, what did you think of that movie, Captain Marvel, though? Oh, jeez. I have no public opinion. Uh, yo. Oh. Hey, Andrew, did, did, yes. did, did you see the Captain Marvel? I have not seen Captain Marvel yet, mm. but I know a lot. It's very polarizing in the opinions. Hmm. Uh, right. Not not for me, Andrew. Not I, for you, because no you have none. Opinion. No now, you can text me. In fact, you, just go ahead and text me and say, what did you think about Captain Marvel? <laughs> I can have a private opinion, oh, but dude. but I will but I will have no public opinion. Yeah, I'm right on. Uh, certainly made a lot of money. Uh, more money than uh, I would like John Trekker to have. And that's only because they tend to ruin the game by winning because they're so good at it. Yeah, they're going to win. No. They got Toy Story. Uh, sure. We got Dumbo and Shazam and Pet uh, Cemetery and Detective Pikachu and Rocket Man. Oh, and that Detective the Pikachu of... might really pull through. That's what I'm saying. I don't it, know. It, did I'm you guys see it got rated PG? It. Oh, it did? Uh -huh. It's going to make a billion dollars. It got rated PG. It's going to make all the money. <laughs> Are you telling me there's any way we don't take the entire family and our extended family and our family's extended family to go see Detective Pikachu? Well, that's a very small family. 
it's not going to win you the... Ah, we're going to do it 100,000 times, though. So. Oh. <laughs> you know, that sounds like you. <laughs> hey, so anyway, um, Captain Marvel was a bad movie. Uh-huh. I mean, wow, bold stance. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You're just stance. trying to... A... I mean, look, what are you going to do? It's a movie. <laughs> Who doesn't love popcorn? All right, listen up, Obama. <laughs> Like, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, look, all right, you want to know what? I'll get real about Captain Marvel, okay? I'll, yeah. I, I'll, I'll spill the tea, all right? Yeah, I went to go see Captain Marvel, and next thing you know, I'm sitting there, credits roll, and I'm like, that was a movie. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. left the theater. Man, well, that was a, I, I'm glad everybody has, uh, has, has done other things in life. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> so I have a new way that I rate movies uh, on whether or not there's an inordinately long shot of main characters looking at the dick of an alien. Oh, and this is the highest rated movie I've seen <laughs> in months. There's definitely a moment where they take a look at an alien's dick and then they look at each other and they're like, damn. The dick on that alien, huh? <laughs> um, there, there's another way I rate movies, which is uh, how many times they warn us that maybe something's weird about a cat. Highest rating of the year. <laughs> uh, I, I will say this, and this is something that we I think, I think we get into in the uh, uh, the VIP podcast. Uh, but the proudest I've ever seen Brian in my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, a teenage daughter, Penny, went to go see the movie by herself and uh, then met us at a restaurant right across the parking lot. And uh, we were talking about the movie and uh, everybody else, not me, because I don't have a public opinion, uh, <laughs> were being very critical of the movie. And then Brian asked me, all right, over under, how many of these problems do you think Penny will have with the movie? And uh, I said a very low over under. She's a teenage girl. It's a very girl friendly movie. It obviously at times panders toward that. So I'm like, you want to know what? There's a million reasons why she's going to love this movie. I'll set it at like two and a half. She sits down and starts complaining about the film. And I swear to God, I mean, it goes over in like the first two seconds. And Brian's face just starts. <laughs> Uh, his his pores start widening as righteous light starts exploding from his face. That's how proud he was. Well, that and was specifically amazing. the language right. she was using, she was like, well, you know, uh, uh, it, like uh, we, we tried our best to not guide her one way or the other. She was like, um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it seemed like it was trying to be funny, but they weren't really telling jokes. They were just, you know, doing a bunch of references, saying things that existed in the 90s. And it's like, you're know, behind her, Brian's eyes. <laughs> and, it's like, yeah. and the main character, a bit of a Mary Sue, never really felt like she was in any peril, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and the universe, there was kind of like no consequences to anything. Like, <laughs> It was amazing. Uh, we was have a whole proud. we have a whole segment of it on this week's spoiler in time at cordkillers.com. Yeah, cross promotion. There we go. There we go. Uh, hey. Dumbo, Dumbo is going to make a whole bunch of money. We're going to win. You think? Sure. There you go. Uh, a friend of mine actually uh, texted me and uh, asked me about a moment that uh, we had all gone to the Bronx Zoo together, and uh, she was trying to remember which uh, they, they him her and her husband were arguing about which uh, animal that we were on a tour had completely evacuated their bowels right in front of the tour bus. Uh, and I remember that it was an elephant. So I settled the argument. And all I could think of for the rest of the day was, what if that happened in Dumbo? Like, the same thing, all the trailer for Dumbo, the Dumbo movie is the same, except there's one scene where Dumbo <laughs> just pisses and shits all over everybody while flying. And you get the same cutaways of uh, uh, Colin Farrell, like, looking up in amazement. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to splice into the trailer a bunch of people like uh with with like a uh, jello uh, melted jello pudding pops just splatting on their face ah! all over everybody it's getting yeah. in their mouths because they're amazed that this elephant is flying and then it shits right in their mouth i wonder if they're gonna do that anyway do we have emails <laughs> we do have some emails let's uh dive into the mailbag drinks in the diamond club <laughs> Boy, that has a sinister tone. <laughs> a, little more, a, little, a little dark to that. <laughs> the Diamond Club. Are they going to murder me there? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, we got a question here from Calgary Guru 
asking simply, is magic real? I think this is an interesting topic only because we talk a lot, especially about YouTube, if like YouTube, any YouTube thing is real. I mean, we talked about, uh, uh, we just talked about the, the thing with the Poly Shore, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was, was it real? Well, okay, so there is, and maybe maybe that has since gone away, but, but when I was getting into magic, when I was learning in the 90s, there was like a... Uh, a subsection of magicians that were very coy with their words that would say like, well, audiences ask me all the time, is magic real? And I look them in the eye and I say, I believe magic is real, period. And then they'd say, because magic is the experience in your mind that happens when you see something that you just can't believe. And if that's not real, I don't want to live in a world that that's, and it's a bunch of, uh, I don't know, equivocation uh, after that. Uh, it's like, uh, 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 no, no, no. Uh, if it was, somebody would have won the James Randi million dollar prize. Sure. Well, actually, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, there is this tremendous cross section between wrestling and magic. And and by the way, uh, Andrew, if you have not had uh, uh, you, you should really have Max Maven on Mat Men. Uh, he Maven. is Max Maven is a, a, a among specifically among mentalists, like one of the most respected people. He is behind the scenes in magic when two any magician, but like specifically mentalists have like an argument over who owns what they go to max maven he's like kind of the, the the behind the scenes judge judy but a super mark like he is a gigantic wrestling fan and we'll talk your rear off about how i just put a max maven it, this this man is the is is the man with the giant widow's peak yeah right? yeah, uh, uh, yeah ming the merciless oh what yeah. a what a what a phenomenally carny looking man <laughs> oh he's he's oh i'm into him Oh, totally. Uh, look up, look up, Max Maven. He is he is a an elder statesman in the world of magic and specifically mentalism. But he oh, wow. uh, is a is a huge, huge, huge wrestling fan. But I've always oh, felt that those two those two fields are very conjoined because yes, magic is not real in that nobody has magic powers. Yes, wrestling is not an athletic competition in the way that you know uh, boxing, the Olympics or is, but fighting or the Olympics are, and yet they can be greater than those things by the art behind it. He, he wrote a, uh, he did a book or a, a DVD set called Cape Ape. What is Cape Ape? Oh, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, it sounds like something he would have written. Yes, that sounds like something that Max Maven would have written. Oh, man. I'm, yeah, he did. The Essential Magic Collection, Cape Ape. Fun fact, if you ever call his phone, he doesn't say hello. He clicks the button and says, speaking. <laughs> oh, which is, I mean, obviously intended to put people off and make them feel awkward. It works. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a very personal problem. I mean, oh no, no. I mean, I've heard, I've heard from friends. That's what your voicemail message should <laughs> be. Speaking, <laughs> and then people will know Brian's whether Brian's there or not. I don't know. That's kind of practical in today's um, robo calling age. Like, I, I definitely just go hello. Oh no hello. no no! See see the trick. Hello. The trick is you say, um, you answer the phone. You say hello. Pause for half a second, then say hello, and then cut yourself off, hanging up. If it's a human being, they'll assume that something went weird and call you back. Oh. I might oh, no. do that. Like, I just, just don't talk. I'll pick it up and then not talk because any human will eventually say hello. Right. The robocalls uh, wait to hear uh, something back. Do, do you guys have like a normal hello or a weird one? Because I apparently have a really weird one that I had no idea. Wait, hold on. No, what's uh, the weird no, one? Yeah, go Please. ahead. I have a really weird hello. The way that I say it. So if I pick up the phone, I go, "Hello." <laughs> Every time. And and I'm and I can't stop doing it. I don't know why I do that. I, I if you ever call me, I'll always answer with, "Hello." <laughs> That's so uh, nice. You, it's usually so bizarre. It's friendly. So, it, so it's so it's very very soft and also goes up like you are like the BBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hello. If I know who you are, I answer it saying, uh, 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 for example, to Justin, I'm like, yo, motherfucker, yo, motherfucker, yo, oh! Uh, if, if Sometimes it, I, I just get hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, get hey <laughs> I usually try to say immediately the person's name uh, yeah. uh, uh, as soon as they call. But if I don't know it, uh, then they get a, uh, hello, this is Brian. And then um, uh, mm. if, if I don't know what it is, then... You get the weird stuff. I always get a text that says, sorry, I'm busy right now. Can I call you later? But what I really know what it wants to say is, 
Sorry, I'm playing Hearthstone. Can I call you back? <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. And I'm doing it at a restaurant or bar, and I feel uncomfortable taking a phone call next to a stranger. <laughs> Uh, we have one more uh, email here. This is from uh, Kevin Hall. Uh, Kevin asks, in all capital letters, why the hell? And then in regular letters, do you guys never promote weird things on Night Attack? It's such an amazing addition to my weekly podcast list. Highly, highly, highly recommend people subscribe and listen to it. You stupid fuckers should have told me about it sooner. Man, not only that, but uh, not only is the show great, it's well produced by hey. one Bryce Neshkam Castillo, but more importantly, uh, I am so, so proud about what we're doing in the After Things uh, segment. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you have no interest, uh, we, we, we've always pitched weird things as being three guys who don't believe in Sasquatch but think he's awesome uh but lately I, I guess what two years we're two years into it um we, we do the the after things podcast where we speak very very candidly about what it's like to be a independent creator and we mm -hmm. give real numbers and we tell real stories uh I'm really really proud of it we also take advice or, or we take questions and give out advice so. oh my god we desperately want more questions yeah, hit us up please. at uh, uh we'll check the show notes you'll find it yeah all right yeah yeah, uh, uh, Weird Things is great. Uh, why don't we plug it? Because we're doing a million things. <laughs> there are so many things that are happening. There's only so many. If we just plugged everything that we did every show, it would be the entire show. There are many, many, many things. Uh, so that'll do it for the mailbag. We'll have a few more uh, next week. Uh, mail at nightattack.tv. M-A-I-L at nightattack.tv. Uh, and I'll tell you what, guys, get get. Get personal. Get weird. Like, yeah. like, like, literally. That that's a mailbag segment where you can totally direct the show. And I know that, that based on our chat room, you guys love to throw out crazy questions. Uh, please hit us up with those because uh, we we want to we want to answer them. Hey man, we are in the last home stretch, and before we get plugs in, we got to give a shout out to the Bit Boss. That's right. Yeah, no, that's right. We do have to give a shout out. Uh, who is currently Cthulhu Collector. Uh, Andrew, where can everybody support everything that you have to do? Uh, follow me on Twitter, Andrew Zarian. Uh, you can go to gfknetwork.com to check out all the shows that we have. And uh, Matt Men Podcast, if you, if you love pro wrestling, I know a lot of your audience does. I know uh, Justin's a big fan. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, I know that you've done some pro wrestling. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, I have actually performed some pro wrestling. You're right. <laughs> you have performed some pro wrestling. If you guys uh, enjoy pro wrestling and, and you like to have fun with it, we're not... We're not sitting there and shitting on things and, and just being miserable. We really have a great time doing it. Uh, Rich and I are uh, 20-year friends, so it's easy for us to sit in a room and, and kind of shoot the shit about pro wrestling. Uh, go check it out. Or if you like tech stuff, uh, I do a show with uh, Paul Therat. I'm approaching, I think, like eight years now that I've been doing a show with him. And it's Holy called What's Kentucky. Go check that out as well. Uh, this is, is a fantastic. great time to get into wrestling. If you're interested in wrestling, A, the, 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 the industry is in a really fun and interesting place, and B, specifically, WrestleMania season is always the time to get in. It's always a an awesome and exciting time. Please, please, please go listen to Matt Men. Come on, give us a give us a rumor. Okay. Give us a rumor, Zarian. Okay. I have I have two things that I could talk about. Okay. Oh, we're so, in music. Uh, I could say one that was gonna happen. And one that is happening, and the one that will happen. I'll give you three things. Three okay. Things. How, how about how about how about you give us one, okay. and then we'll, we'll do the other okay. two. After I'll do, give you one. Uh, WWE was very close to purchasing Noah. Okay. Wow. That is that is a deep cut. That a is that is cut. one of a, a very a very uh, a well revered Japanese professional wrestling outfit. Uh, uh, pro wrestling Noah. They were close to yeah. buying Noah. Very close. Very very close. And the rug was pulled under them. And the sale went to somebody else, and Steve Carino was uh, heading the project of purchasing Noah. Oh, wow. man. Okay. Those are a lot of very specific details, which uh, makes you know uh, 100%. There's I think no I speak for that, all that of Chat all Realm paid. when I say that we, we, we're we breathing a big sigh of relief that we finally got the real skinny on that one. <laughs> uh, love you guys. Die to fire. See you next I year. love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>